Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and today we're back for another episode of Make Tartaria Great Again. This particular episode is of interest to me because it deals with addiction, which is something that I work a lot with. And the thing that I really enjoy about it as well is that it is a good example of how they take a grain of truth in conspiracy theories and then just literally run with it. So let's cue up the music and have a listen to Max Ingham talk about addiction to electronic devices and how that will result in us being vaporized by energy weapons. And of course the reason people are so locked into this world is because of the dopamine addiction that they are suffering because of the way these devices have been set up. You know, every time you click an icon, every time you do something on your smartphone, every time you click something, every time you get a like, all of these things release dopamine into your body. And we have a society that is now suffering from mass dopamine addiction, most especially among the youth of today. Well, unfortunately, that's not really a complete picture. But if you want to buy into this, go ahead and hit that little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner. It'll make you feel better in the long run, right? And it's true, folks. It's what causes this addiction to technology. And for the most part, people are caught up in a situation where they're measuring their life and their whole existence by the amount of pleasure they're able to receive at any given moment, which renders them into a state of indifference towards the real world around them. You know, just as an aside, I think I probably ought to clear up a little misconception that Max is kind of spreading right now. People are not going from one sugar high to the next in addictions lots of times. What happens is, is that they have a very positive response from their initial use of the substance. They release the dopamine, which triggers the pleasure centers of the brain. But the problem that you run into is if you run into chronically high levels of dopamine, your brain actually down-regulates the dopamine receptors. So if you look at the upper left corner there, you'll see the red of the dopamine receptors in a normal brain. If you look at the other three brains, one of an alcoholic, a cocaine user, and somebody that's perhaps addicted to food, you see a lack of that red color in the, in the PET scans. The reason for that is, is the receptors have downregulated, and the problem that you can run into if you're in that situation is that you may no longer feel pleasure of any kind. Because even though you have dopamine floating around in your system, there's nothing for it to trigger. And that is a problem that you run into with addiction. And sometimes people use in, a, in an attempt to just feel something. So let's let Max continue to talk about his use of technology as an addiction. I mean, I don't know. I just find it a weird thing, this fascination people have with the tech. And, and often when I say this sort of stuff, people say, yeah, but here we are watching this stuff on our smartphones. Max, if we threw away our smartphones, we'd never get to watch your show. And I just don't understand this because I do the shows and I watch all these other shows, but I don't have a smartphone. I do it all on my computer at home. That's the thing, you know, you've got all the stuff at home to be able to do this. And you can still do all the things that you are doing online now by doing it on your computer. I mean, all I'm suggesting is that when you go out into the real world, you leave the tech behind and you go out and actually experience the real world and experience real people as themselves. You know, I think Max has a point here. There probably are people that are addicted to tech. Uh, if you look at the lines for the new iPhones that come out that stretch around the blocks, these are people that just want to be what we call early adapters. However, many of us use tech to our advantage to make our lives easier. For example, in my business, I fill out forms for the state of Michigan, and these forms have to be filled out correctly. I began to analyze the errors that were made that resulted in these forms being rejected, which required them to be done again and inconvenience the patients, etc. And I actually developed software to fill the form out for me so that it was always correct. And in addition to filling out the form, it enabled me to collect some data. For example, here are the conditions that I treat compared to the averages for the state. I can also take particular conditions and find age ranges for them. Uh, down here, I've got post-traumatic stress syndrome and hepatitis C, for example. These things make my job easier. They reduce the staff time that I need to correct incorrectly filled out forms. 
it made me more efficient. My smartphone keeps me on track for where I need to be on a particular day. Uh, it can help me find that location if I have to take a detour, for example, due to road construction. It just gives me my aviation weather. These are things that just make things a lot easier for me to do my day-to-day -day life. I'm not particularly addicted to my smartphone, but I do have a lot of things that make it very valuable to me. And these are things that I could do on my own, but I'd rather devote my energy and time to doing things that are more related to my job than keeping track of my miles for the Internal Revenue so Service. Not people that are sitting there staring at these screens. I mean, you don't need to take the virtual world out with you into the real world. You can leave the virtual world at home and participate in the real world. That would make a huge difference if people were to do that. Because all you're doing really is you're taking this surveillance device and this tracking device with you everywhere. And people are often forgetting their life skills or even forgetting how to find their way around their own towns without a GPS. It's ridiculous. Now here's what I'm talking about when I say that conspiracy theories tend to take a grain of truth, make a reasonable conclusion from that, and then take it to the extremes. Now Max is saying basically we're losing our life skills because we're over-reliant on our technology to the exclusion of the real world. And as you can see by this photograph, we've got all these people walking up and down the street they're not paying attention to anything other than their smartphones. I think that that's a very reasonable concern to have. But watch how he takes this to a new level. And that's the problem, folks, is that people are taking the tech with them everywhere they go, and they're using the tech to involve themselves in real-world activities, such as shopping at supermarkets and checking into hotels and all of this sort of stuff that they're using their tech for when they never used to. You used to just sign forms and go and pay cash and do all this sort of stuff. And you could still do that. The only reason that they're all changing it all over to digital is because people carry their smartphones around with them everywhere and they let their smartphones run their lives for them. As I said, you know, they just become indifferent to everything. Click a few buttons and the job's done. Click a few buttons and you find your way here. Click a few buttons and this happens and that happens. You don't have to think for yourself. The phone does it all for you. I mean, really, it's about a loss of life skills and it's about control and ultimately it's about surveillance. And this is how it's done, folks, and this is why the control grid is able to perpetuate. The way it does is why it's able to continue, because people simply don't notice it because they're too distracted doing other things. But like I said, the other things they're doing are virtually nothing. You see how that subtle change was made? It went from a social commentary on interacting with our fellow human beings to a controller taking advantage of our physiology and putting out high-tech apps and devices that compel us to carry a surveillance device with us at all times. We'll see where he goes with that. Nothing. And the real world is going through some drastic changes around them. Indeed, it's gone through some drastic changes already. We've certainly seen some changes in California this year. My heart really does go out to the people in California who are suffering the fires as well. Notice how every fire they've had in California in the last two years has been the worst fire in California's history, and it just keeps getting worse and worse, and it's all part and parcel with the same thing, folks. Very coincidentally, of course, the location of all of the fires that we've seen in California in the last two years just happen to all follow the path of the new high-speed train that they want to put in between San Francisco and Los Angeles, all of which is being run by Senator Feinstein's husband, billion-dollar contract, set to make a lot of money on that one, folks. And these are very interesting fires. Again, the fires we saw in Malibu are a particular type of forest fire which turns houses into uniform piles of white ash but somehow seems to not burn the forest or the trees. You know these are some images from the Woolsey fire in 2018. It was a pretty bad fire in the Malibu area. As you can tell the entire hillsides burned out. This is not isolated just to the buildings or the infrastructure leaving the trees intact. Then he goes on to suggest that these fires were somehow deliberately set in the path of a proposed high-speed rail line and then named the individual in charge of the rail project uh, as if to blame them for having some sort of contributing factor to these fires. You know, 
that's not very smart, and it's quite a leap of logic. But wait, there's more. This is all active denial. This is all directed energy weapons, ladies and gentlemen, and it's simply a taste of what is to come. And looking even deeper at this control grid, looking deeper at the 5G grid, you've got to ask yourself whether what is really being set up is not a kill grid. Because it could well be used for that. And you think about it, folks, if they've flooded the world, if they've done all this stuff, brought all these children, all these foundlings, created this whole new culture, this whole new society, they build it up to a certain point, and if they needed to wipe the people out, well, this would be a perfect way to do it. Okay, so we've got directed energy weapons, kill grids with 5G phones, mud floods, and it's all them. Now, we never really figure out who them is, but I'll tell you something. That lizard's looking a little suspicious, and it's a good thing I have dogs. Yeah, get people enslaved to this monetary system, which limits their potential, causes a barrier to be erected between them and reality, a barrier of scarcity whereby they've got to collect paper in order to pay to be alive. Gradually lead them into this digital system, lead it to a point where they've got to carry this device around with them in order to perform everyday functions. This device gives you the ability to better track everybody, locate anybody at any given time, record any conversation everybody's having, literally surveil every aspect of everybody's lives. And if you really needed to, if the situation got to a point where you were found out, you could simply switch the whole system over to active denial and fry them. Oh dear, Max. And on that happy note, Let's go ahead and have everybody hit the little like and subscribe down in the lower right corner. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan and this has been another episode of Make Tartaria Great Again. Mm -hmm.